That was undoubtedly an act of God and I am smiling because this is the butcher of Tehran who after a month and a half ago, firing missiles towards God's holy land was taken down in a helicopter crash because of bad weather. Tell me that is not the hand of God at work. We see this throughout the scriptures, God using weather <laughs> to provide for His people, to defeat His enemies. You know, there were three helicopters flying, three, and only Raisis went down to that extent. And only he and the, the foreign minister were killed. And the foreign minister really was the, the face and the voice. Yes, I did actually do a little dance and cheer, to be perfectly honest, because this is somebody who is a, a defiant enemy of the living God, who is a defiant enemy of the people of Israel. And it was unprecedented what happened under his reign. House of Destiny, come on, let's worship the Lord together. Sing it. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, oh yeah, break into the wild, oh and don't be afraid, oh no, run into wide open spaces, great is, it's waiting for you, dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is, it's waiting, come on, say, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Oh, we declare where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. So come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love, yeah. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. We say, bring all, bring all of your burdens, bring all of your scars, come on back, come back to communion, come back to the start, oh, run into wide open spaces, say, grace is waiting, yeah, we will dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is it's waiting, say where it is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom, oh, we declare where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom, so come out of the dark, yeah, into, into the fullness of His love, for the Spirit is here, let there be Freedom, we say, let there be freedom right here, right now. Oh, yes, let there be freedom right here in your presence. Oh, we receive it now. We know chains will fall and prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole. And hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. We say, chains will fall. That's it. Prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' oh, name. And lives made whole again. Hearts awake, hearts awake. Oh, at the sound of Jesus' name. Come on, sing and say, chains will fall. That's it. Prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yeah. Lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Come on, just let the Spirit of the Lord fill the place that you're in right now. Oh, there is freedom, yeah. Hey, say there is freedom, yeah. yeah. Come on, sing it. Say with the Spirit, with the Spirit of the Lord. There is freedom, there is freedom. Sing where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. So come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Oh, freedom for your mind. Freedom for your heart, right here in the presence of the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. No more shackles, no 
given us multiple chances. Thank you, Father. You know I had my doubts. I thought the fire went out. But the old winds are blowing, blowing again. You know I lost my way. I'm sure I will again someday. This whisper calling, calling again. This is the sound of a child coming home. Hallelujah. This is the song of a welcome prodigal. Hallelujah. I thought I was too far gone, but you always leave the light on. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, coming home. Yeah. Come on, sing. Thought I was miles away. Somehow my vision changed. Cause I know you've been with me all along. Took me a long, long to finally realize that you never, ever, ever shut the door. This is the sound of a child coming home. Hallelujah. This is the song of a welcome prodigal. Hallelujah. I thought I was too far gone, but you are. perfect love for those who don't know where to start he always meets us where we are for those with just a little faith a little faith is all it takes and he's calling he's calling if you got caught up in religion's game then let him show you Search of truth, he'll bring that 
space that we're in right now. God, we just ask, Lord God, that your presence would surround us. God, and we choose your will over ours. God, and we thank you for strength to make room in our lives, to move things away. God, so you can have all the room you need to, God, to take everything out that shouldn't be in my life, God, and replace it with all the goodness of who you are. Jesus, we worship, we worship. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want. Oh, I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender Oh, this is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. Here is my surrender.
The best time is offering time because it's a time that we put God first. It's a time that we honor Him. We get our eyes completely off of ourselves. People get so tired of worrying, so tired of their circumstances, so tired of me, 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 and I, I, I. We all get tired of that. What's refreshing is when we look up and we look to the Lord. And that's what the offering is. It's a time to put God first and say, it's not about me, my kingdom, my four, no more. It's about God and He loves it. Psalm chapter number one, when your delight is in the law of the Lord and you meditate on His law day and night, then that person is like a tree, listen, planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. I'm gonna repeat that end part. Whatever they do prospers. As I said and do say many times, you're too late. If you wanna tell me that prosperity isn't from the Lord, and that you can't prosper when you receive Jesus because you will begin to prosper spirit, soul, and body. And that's why the scripture says, prove me, says the Lord, and see if I won't pour out a blessing upon your life that you can't even contain, super abundance. For a gift of $25 or more, again, you can have Kim's book, Click the banner so we know that you want the book with your $25 or more offering. Click the banner, let us know you want the book. We'll make sure that you get it. Thank you, House of Destiny, you're the best and you're only going one way, pros prospering in the Lord. 
Hello, House of Destiny. We have another missions update for you today. If this is your first time tuning in, I just want to let you know that we provide missions all around the world to children in need in multiple countries, India, Uganda, Cambodia, Guatemala, many other places. And we provide food and shelter adoption advocacy, all of these things, um, medical attention, life-saving surgeries. And so all the way in India, our education program called the Believe in Me Center is near the Kolkata landfill. And it houses 60 children to receive education. Now, big a big part of our effort is to make sure that these children stay up to date with their education because a lot of them come in knowing not how to read or write and they are of the age to know how to do so and so we go in and we make sure that they have the education in order to live a long uh, prosperous life and most of these children it's unfortunate just in 2024 they have not even seen a computer. They don't have any understanding of the modern day technology. And so what we've been able to do is not only teach reading and writing, but we've been able to open a door so that way they can be able to know how to do everything on a computer with education, with technology, and be able to participate in this modern world and look to have a very good future in that. And you are a part of that, not only allowing them to just have the bare minimum, but we've gone beyond the norm and we have provided a window, an open door, so that way they can thrive in 2024 and in years to come. And if you're watching this, and you're not a partner or maybe you've slacked off and you're you know you stop be, being a partner I would encourage you to click the link rejoin or join for the first time because stuff like this is so important yes food and water and shelter is it's a necessity but in today's culture so is technology and more than anything it's education and these children have the opportunity because of you because of your giving because of your seeds of love they have an opportunity to thrive beyond the minimum level and that is all because of you Welcome to Current Events. It's been a bizarre but very interesting week in the Middle East. Let's go to the first clip now. Iran's Supreme Leader appointed first Vice President Mohammad Makhbir as the country's acting president after Raisi's death. Iran's cabinet also announced they would continue the policies of Raisi. According to a TV state report, Raisi's helicopter crashed in bad weather after returning from inaugurating a dam in Iran's East Azerbaijan province. Iran's foreign minister also died in the crash. The crash comes after months of war between Iran's proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, and Iran's unprecedented drone and missile attack in April. Raisi is known as the Butcher of Tehran for his involvement in sentencing thousands of political opponents to death in the 1980s, after the Islamic Revolution. During his term as president, he suppressed massive protests against the regime and also oversaw Iran's nuclear program get closer to weapons-grade uranium than ever. Well, Christy Donne, welcome. And um, as far as I'm concerned, that is an act of God. That was an act of God. Christy? That was undoubtedly an act of God, and I am smiling because this is the butcher of Tehran who, after a month and a half ago, firing missiles towards God's holy land, was taken down in a helicopter crash because of bad weather. Tell me that is not the hand of God at work. We see this throughout the scriptures, God using weather <laughs> to provide for his people, to defeat his enemies. And this is something Doobie and I spoke about on yesterday's show quite extensively. We're, we're seeing things that are akin to the Old Testament accounts we've read of taking place now. And that's something we have to pay attention to. You know, there were three helicopters flying, three, and only Raisis went down to that extent. 
and only he and the, the foreign minister were killed. And the foreign minister really was the, the face and the voice of the policies of the, the I mean, I'm going to say it what it is, this demonic entity, the spirit of antichrist, the spirit of anti-Semitism, he was the face and voice of it so often because it was easier for him to travel than it was for, for, for Raisi to travel. And so, yes, I did actually do a little dance and cheer, to be perfectly honest, because this is somebody who is a, a defiant enemy of the living God, who is a defiant enemy of the people of Israel, and it was unprecedented what happened under his reign just a number of weeks ago, with we see rockets flying over the Temple Mount, all over Israel, 300 rockets in the... the yes. yes. Even there we know that was the hand of God, that nothing uh, actually happened, and that could have... So many casualties could have taken place, but we are seeing the hand of God at work, and that is something I want to encourage all of you about, because this actually makes me incredibly excited, because I look and think, aha, there he is, there's the God of Elijah, there's the God of Ezekiel. There's the God of Jeremiah. Look at him working in our day and age right now. And we know he's the same. Yes. We know that he's able to do now what he did then, but we're watching it happen. So it makes me very excited. Yes. Well, we're excited, but not only us, the Iranian people are excited as well. So let's go to that clip. Ellie Coney, great to have you here and get your perspective. First of all, what's your reaction to the death of Ibrahim Raisi? Chris, I am celebrating along with millions of Iranians who, um, when they celebrate on the streets of Iran by, uh, we've seen on social media videos, uh, setting off fireworks, sharing funny memes, people dancing in the streets, children of political dissidents who lost a parent, mm -hmm. um, cheering with drinks to each other. I join them in their happiness because uh, the man who died in that helicopter crash is known as the butcher of Tehran in Iran. Yeah, he killed uh, thousands I bet, back in uh, the 1980s, 1988, and then in 2019 slaughtered about 1,500 people during those uh, protests. So he earned that reputation then. Exactly right. Like you said, Chris, um, Raisi, the, the president of Iran who just died, was personally responsible overseeing these kangaroo court systems, which uh, at most gave people these, these fake trials, five-minute show trials. And he was responsible for one of the greatest mass execution of political prisoners in human history. Where do you see this affecting inside Iran and the region as well, the Middle East? Well, Chris, this is where it gets very interesting. So President Raisi was one of just two people who was in line for succession to be the supreme leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The supreme leader is the highest position of office in Iran. The supreme leader uh, right now is the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who um, really has the sole decision-making power, and, and it's an incredibly powerful position. So in line for succession, because Khamenei is now in his 80s, and, and people understand that at any any minute he will die and, and that's another day that will be a, a day of celebration for millions um, but in line for succession for Khamenei were Raisi and his son Mojtaba Khamenei so it seems that at the moment we have only Mojtaba left which does create some problems because first of all there are factions different faction, factions that are vying for power but also if Khamenei's son were to become the next supreme leader you've then instituted in Iran, a hereditary system. And um, the irony is that this regime came to so-called liberate Iran from the monarchy, uh, which was a hereditary system, the Pahlavi dynasty, before the Islamic Revolution in 1979. So many people will legitimately take issue with, with such, a, such a thing occurring. Dane. Yeah, um, so that's, that's uh, very interesting how things have gone, because often I post uh, uh, pictures. Once in a while I do this because I come across them on social media. I'll, I'll see the pictures of, for instance, women in Iran in 1978, you know, before the, the, uh, the revolution there. And they're just normal. Everybody was like us, you know, <laughs> dressed normal. They weren't covering their women up and arresting people. for. And so what she's saying about the monarchy is so interesting because how it's come back around where the whole reason that they did that in the first place was to supposedly free the people from the hereditary system. And now here they are, and with the death of this, 
the is, is he called the prime minister or president? The president. With the death of the president, um, now it puts uh, um, um, his son in line for the position, yes. which has just gone exactly, and not that long of a time, they've gone back around in a circle. Yes. And some people have, you know, questioned maybe there was some funny business going on with the helicopter crash, and perhaps it was something to do with that. But I actually don't think so. Yeah. It looked to me like, I mean, any time you put a helicopter in um, fog, uh, it's pretty bad. We saw what happened with Kobe Bryant back in 2020. I think it was his helicopter crashed and it was the same conditions, heavy, heavy fog. It's very foolish to do that. And so I don't feel anybody actually at this stage from looking at this, I don't think any, you know, intelligence agency, certainly not Israel, they tried to blame Israel. It was so ridiculous because Israel's like, look, we ain't shedding a tear over the guy. But it's not to our benefit anyway. It, you know, it, it wouldn't have been to our benefit. And so... Well, Donna, the U.S. government sent, uh, this Biden regime, sent condolences. I know. That, that was... More than that. Yes, that sending was, condolences to them. And then what do they do to Israel yes. in America is unheard of. Yes, Christy. More than that, the U.N. held a moment of silence for him. Everybody stood... The day that the ICC issued an a, a yes. arrest warrant for Bibi Netanyahu, all of these fools stood up in the UN and held a moment of silence for the butcher of Tehran. It's the equivalent of saying, we're just going to have a little moment of silence for Hitler. We'll be right back. What? Yeah, it's, it's right. It's, it, you're talking <laughs> yes. about somebody... No, the world has gone crazy, Christy. And you know, this is what I've been thinking about, madame. Dad prophesied this. He did. And, the, you know, when you think about the scriptures, ahead, it says right. in the in these end times, people will call good evil and evil good. And that's what we're witnessing. Mm -hmm. We're witnessing yes. people calling yes. evil good. And it sounds too simple. And you think, surely it can't be like this. But it is. We're watching it happen before our eyes across the world in so many ways. Like you're saying, it's gone mad. It's, this is what people are doing. They're saying this is good when it's clearly evil and they're saying this is evil when it's clearly good. Well, with that, let's go to the next clip now about the, the, the arrest warrants for Bibi Netanyahu. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the decision a moral outrage of historic proportions that would cast an everlasting mark of shame on the international court. Israel is waging a just war against Hamas, a genocidal terrorist organization that perpetrated the worst attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Hamas massacred 1,200 Jews, raped Jewish women, burned Jewish babies, took hundreds hostage. Netanyahu's response came after the ICC's chief prosecutor said Monday he's seeking arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, as well as three Hamas leaders, including Yehia Sinwar, for war crimes and crimes against humanity in connection with the current war. Israel's Knesset also swiftly opposed the ICC's action. Despite their political differences, a huge majority, 106 out of 120 Knesset members, signed a statement condemning the ICC's accusations. The statement says in part, the scandalous comparison by the Hague prosecutor between Israel's leaders and the heads of terror organizations is an unerasable historic crime and a clear expression of anti-Semitism. Israeli President Isaac Herzog said the decision only emboldens terrorists around the world. We will not forget who started this war, who raped, butchered, burned, brutalized and kidnapped innocent civilians and families. We will not forget our hostages whose safe return should be the main concern of the international community. President Biden also opposed the allegations against Israel. Let me be clear. We reject the ICC's application for arrest warrants against Israeli leaders. Whatever these warrants may imply, there is no equivalence between Israel and Hamas, contrary to allegations against Israel made by the International Court of Justice. What's happening is not genocide. Internationally, France and Belgium backed the ICC's move for arrest warrants, but Italy called it unacceptable and absurd. Netanyahu said the charges against him were meant to take away Israel's right to self-defense, but he made it clear it would not stop the war against Hamas. Christy, 
You know, when, when I look at that, the fact, the fact that they would, in the same sentence, compare Benjamin Netanyahu to the Hamas leaders, you cannot tell me that is not demonically inspired. You, you, you can't tell me there's not something going on here. We know that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But let me tell you something. Sometimes it looks like those principalities and powers are wearing skins, uh, are wearing uh, suits of skin, let me tell you. Because the fact that that comparison is being made when yes. Bibi Netanyahu so clearly laid it out, not since the Holocaust have we seen anything. We, that is the last time that amount of Jews was murdered at one time. Between the Holocaust and October 7th, nothing happened like that that could be an equivalent. And the fact that they're standing there comparing these foul, vicious, rancid Hamas leaders to somebody like Bibi Netanyahu and even Gallant is absolute insanity to me. But again, we're seeing prophecy starting to, like, it's starting to unravel before our eyes, you know. So you've got places like Norway and Ireland and you're hearing different places that are standing up and saying, oh, you know, we want a Palestinian state and we recognize them. And then you've got these other countries like was mentioned there that are saying we support what the, uh, the, the International Criminal Court is trying to do. But then you look at it and go, God is going to vindicate Israel here. This is what he does. And we're looking at them for me, at least, it's, it's still such a source of hope. Israel is the biggest source of hope to me because look at what's been done to them even in the last year, but they stand. Look at what's been done. Look at what the enemies have tried. Look at the fact that they are, in essence, standing alone in a lot of ways. And I do believe, obviously, because of Scripture, prophecy, we know that that will happen even further. But what that does is feed hope into my soul because I'm looking at that saying, God saw this. He knew what was going to happen and He's told us the end of the story. So because of all this, even though it can feel chaotic, yes. we have hope because of it. Definitely. Second Thessalonians says, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as from us to effect that the day of the Lord had come. No one is to deceive you in any way. For it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Now that word apostasy is a very big deal, um, especially in, in, uh, in prophecy today, because that word uh, means an act of refusing to continue to follow, obey, or recognize a religious faith. So you can see in the world today how how our moral, the moral values of the world are changing. They're calling evil good and good evil. And we can see, I mean, even in the court system in, in the United States and of course the ICC, uh, their, their, uh, claim against uh, Netanyahu and, uh, and Gantz, it's completely, uh, it's just not rational. And, um, that is what's happening in our world. And we are told um, that apostasy is, going to, apostasy is going to come first. And then after that, the man of lawlessness is, is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that... While I was still with you, this is um, Paul speaking, I was telling you these things and you know what restrains him now so that he will be revealed in his time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's removed. Then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will, will eliminate with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end with the appearance of his coming. So we know that evil is going to get worse. And we're told that in Thessalonians. We're told that the coming of the Lord, when the coming of the Lord is close, you're going to see apostasy. You're going to see evil turning speaking evil being said to be good and good said to be evil. And, and people's perspectives, 
completely uh, skewed so that they, they're viewing the world in such a distorted way as to believe that Netanyahu cannot defend his country and, and people should not be standing with the Jewish people is absolutely ludicrous. But we know that these things are going to be taking place in the end times. And uh, we're told in the, in the word of God to expect these things, but not to be dismayed or to be fearful because they're supposed to happen, but we are not appointed to the wrath of God. Those who are redeemed, who have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, are not to be dismayed or fearful because it does not apply to you. It applies to what is happening in the world and how God's plan for mankind is actually unfolding before our eyes. And, and when I say that, I'm speaking about the fact that Iran and Russia and the, these nations of the world that are coming against Israel are so biblical that it's quite astounding to see what's happening in our world today. And speaking of that, um, uh, the next clip, uh, is re with regards to Russia. So let's go to that clip now. Retired U.S. Air Force Colonel and CNN military analyst Cedric Layton is joining me now for more analysis. Hi there, Colonel. So tell us more about uh, Russia's military gains, particularly in Kharkiv, and why this is significant. Yeah, good morning, Amara. There are a lot of aspects to this that are very significant. First of all, it's as Fred was mentioning, this is kind of the first breakout of the Russians uh, in over two years. And what it really means is that they're moving toward uh, the second largest city of Kharkiv as a, as a population of about 1.5 million. And if Kharkiv were to fall, that would be a significant blow to the Ukrainians. So the Ukrainians are worried that uh, that could happen. But more importantly, they are worried that... Uh, Kharkiv would become uninhabitable and as that it would be kind of like Aleppo in Syria uh, when the Russians uh, supported Bashar al-Assad and his regime and kept the terrorist uh, forces uh, they were fighting in in that particular area so it was uh, a you know it's a very difficult thing for the Ukrainians to deal with but the main problem is is that the USA has not arrived in time to prevent this type of advance by the Russian forces. Uh, it's very clear that the Russians are, are moving on that axis of attack, plus they're also planning attacks in other parts of the country along other parts of the front. So as you can see from that uh, clip, uh, Russia is making some incredible gains, um, and we're not really told about it. They don't uh, show it on the news so much these days. But um, we know from the Bible that in the end times, Russia is there. And we know that Iran is there. We know that Turkey is there because they all come down from the north and they attack uh, Israel. And um, Israel is in a, a war for its very existence right now. The, the uh, Hezbollah are, the rockets of I mean, they're flowing over the border every single day, aren't they, Christy? They really are. You know, just today I was looking at it, seeing that there was rockets coming down into the Golan, into the Galilee, you know, in, in Beersheba and Sterot and all these different places that are on the borders. They're still coming. And this is something I wanted to actually mention. I, I did speak about this on Israel Update yesterday, but I just want to tell you guys who might not have seen it. We spoke at the beginning of this show about how we really do believe that Ray sees helicopter going down was an act of God. Well, this is something that's encouraging, again, to show that the God of Israel is at work today. There was a playground in Beersheba, and well, there is a playground, and a bunch of children were out at it playing. I think this was on Monday this last week. And a whole lot of families were out there, and suddenly, out of nowhere, came this crazy sandstorm. No, ex they didn't, weren't expecting it. The weather seemed like it was going to be clear. This crazy sandstorm comes, so all everybody sort of scatters. Like, oh, well, you, you don't want your kids outside in a sandstorm in a playground. About five minutes after the sandstorm started, the sirens went off, and rockets fell, and a rocket hit that exact playground. And if the sandstorm hadn't have come, all of those children and families would have been killed. And so God once again used the sand. Once again, he used the weather to do something to save his yes. people. Ah. And so we see the hand of God on weather in different ways, both saving his people and also defeating an enemy. Yes. And yet again, I know I keep saying it, but it's really made me excited this week looking at all of this. Even though everything is chaotic, we know this. We're humans, we're awful, we're yes. chaotic. That's what we are. But 
I have so much hope because I feel like I'm watching God work the way that I've read about so many times in the Old Testament. And that makes me excited and, and, and full of hope and faith for the future because in the midst of the chaos, remember Jesus slept in the middle of the storm and the storm is circling all around us in life, but we can still find the sleeping Christ in the boat who then stands to calm the wind and waves. And that's something that I think we just would yes. do well to remember now. And this is coming from somebody who's got a pretty severe anxiety problem. So be encouraged as I'm taking hope and faith <laughs> in my anxious ways, looking around. Uh, I really believe that that is there for us too. And Israel is such a beacon of that. So be uh, be strengthened this week in your heart as you just hear what's, what's gone in, on and what God has yes. done. Well, we know for sure that God will get the glory in the end because um, no nation will stand with Israel. It will be God. And Ezekiel chapter 38 tells us that God, although all the nations come down, God, that is when God takes control over the situation and there is a war. And most prophecy teachers will tell you that Ezekiel 38 is a future prophecy that has not been uh, fulfilled yet. And we are watching those nations come together in unbelievable ways. And it, it's, it's just astounding to actually, to actually be watching the news. And I watch it every week. Well, what's Iran? What's happening in Iran? What's happening in Turkey? What's happening in Russia? And every week I have something to bring to the table to speak about to show you. These nations are aligning themselves. They're positioning in themselves. And even although, um, we can't see w what the hook in the jaw could be, uh, the fact that a hook is in a jaw means maybe Russia doesn't really want to come against Israel, but God puts a hook in the jaw and brings, uh, uh, Russia into this situation where they decide then they, they actually make a decision to do it, to make an evil plan and come against Israel. Um, but you know, there is no United States going to help Israel. God is going to get the glory for this. And so what happens to the United States? Uh, that is a question that everybody's asking. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, we can't see how that could happen. America being the, the greatest nation on planet earth, why would they not be involved in, in saving Israel? Um, it's, it's, it's quite puzzling, but let's go to this clip now. The United States is in a declining position in the world economy. It has been, but now it's being felt. You could pretend it wasn't there. You could deny it. There are plenty of people who do that still. But it's getting harder and harder as these tariffs and sanctions all show. That's the most important thing to understand. Every country in the world, and I want to underline every is rethinking its entire foreign economic policy and your political alliances. Look at the departure of Americans from Niger and Africa and being replaced by Ru Russian troops. This is all signs. You'd have to be really blind or desperate not to see all that's going on. You know, you, you probably would have to be blind not to realize what is going on in America and also not to think uh, that this is a long-term plan that has been going on for decades now, an infiltration of our system. My father prophesied about it, and now we are starting to see that happen. So, you know, you guys were saying how evil will be good and good will be evil, the Bible says it. So I was thinking about it, and... You know, from day to day, and I know everybody watching me probably feels this way too. It's very, very frustrating to see so much injustice mm -hmm. um, everywhere. And I, I know that a lot of people, it, it's so frustrating to feel like, is, is something going to happen that's going to make this right? You know, um, you know in, in the past, there would always be someone who would sort of rise up and, and, and do something. And it, it's, may, it's very difficult in the world that we're in today because of, of the way that things are functioning with the technology ex, uh, advancing the way it has, that we can actually see things going on the, in the world in real time, sort of all at the same time. And um, it, it's almost 
like God's giving us a little view of what it must be like for him uh, to look upon the world and the events going on. We kind of have this view now because of the technology we have where we can see each other quickly and see what's going on simultaneously everywhere. And it's very overwhelming. But the thing that I've come out of this with is just like what we saw happening in Iran, the butcher of Tehran. Okay, this isn't a person who did wonderful things. The Iranian people are, are, are shooting off fireworks because they're so happy he's gone. Uh, in 2019, again, he slaughtered Iranians. The Iranian people have been uh, um, imprisoned by this ideology that is spreading all over the world and uh, very focused on the West. And so because of the situation we're in, it makes me think of dad, my dad prophesying all the way in 1993, God showed him a vision of the warriors of the new millennium. And here we stand in the new millennium as warriors against the a most unprecedented kind of warfare. And it truly is spiritual. Even people who know nothing about the Bible or, or, or you know, maybe they have a vague knowledge will come out and say, this feels like a spiritual war. So to people who, even, who aren't seasoned in it, who don't recognize it, who are of the world, even they recognize something is different about this. And, and so uh, it is so important to hear from my mother right now because of what God put on her heart to study the word and the prophets for the time that we were coming into. So it's amazing how God worked in my mom and dad's lives as far as prophetically. And so... I, even though I feel so frustrated from day to day, looking at the news, looking at the injustices. I mean, I can, I don't think people actually realize how emotionally affected we all have been over what happened on October 7th. Because it, it, it no, no matter if a person had a side in it, if you look at the footage and the way they behaved, it is truly demonic. And for me, it made me feel, uh, it's almost a feeling I could never describe, I've never felt it before, of a realization of the potential of what human beings have the capability of doing to one another. And I, I never imagined people, even the Nazis and the stories you'd hear about the Nazis and what they would do to babies and things. This was, it, I don't want to say worse, but it was so uh, primal and raw and of the flesh that it has left a scar upon the people who understand and see what's happening, even those who don't understand. Um, it was so much more than just some country attacking some other country or some group attacking some, under, some other group. Uh, the way in which they behaved when they murdered and tortured these Jewish people in their own land, uh, it is, it, it's frightening. But then you have to realize it is demonic and we are in a spiritual war, which means we have a responsibility as Christians and as those who do see and understand what's going on to really fight this battle. And a huge part of that is prayer and faith and holding strong because we can recognize, look what happened to the butcher of, of Tehran. And, and the, he was there trying to pull uh, Azerbaijan away from Israel. That's what that was really all about politically. And God intervened there just the way he did over the Iron Dome. So now I'm feeling, okay, I'm feeling these terrifying things, but I am seeing the hand of God in real time taking care of things. How many times have we seen certain things happen and then lightning will strike? These things are not just nothing. God uses these as signs for those of us who, who know to look for them. And we have a responsibility also to share this with others because there's an urgency and we are running out of time. I think... Uh, the more frustrated we become with, with, with the injustices, the more indicative it are, is of Christ's return. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is correct for us to be looking at this. And so I just wanted to have that say because I have felt so strongly all week it uh, sits in my spirit about what happened on October 7th. And it has scarred me mm -hmm. just from knowing what they did. The things that they did to 19-year-old girls, I saw a video, I posted it on my social media, the, the, the three 19-year-old girls and their pants soaked with blood from being raped and the back of their feet cut so they couldn't run away. Beautiful girls, young girls treated this way was it's truly eye-opening to the situation and, 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 and makes it very easy for me and many of us who understand on which side we are on 
And it isn't that, oh, we want innocent people to suffer. We don't. But Israel has the right to defend itself. And Israel is not doing what Hamas did. That, that it, the, the hypocrisy is outrageous. And so, so we are asking you to continue to stand with us at the House of Destiny in prayer and in spreading this message. And so I encourage you today, if you are watching this on social media, share this video. Hear what my mother had to say about this as we read from the Bible, as we look at it. And join us every week as we do this and share this information because it's important. We are not fear, we're not trying to frighten anybody into, oh, Jesus is coming back and we're going to be, that's not what we're doing. We are in that moment now. That time has come. And so it is very important for us to all be focused on what is occurring so that we can together find God's will and move in the right direction and also see clearly. So we have been praying again and again every week, show us the truth, God. Show us what you need us to see and your will be done. And we have complete faith in you. So that's where we stand at the House of Destiny Network. And many of you have been standing with us for many years. You know what we went through losing my dad and not sure what to do with the ministry. And here we sit today and we have kept this going and it has not been easy for us. Um, it, it was a difficult thing that God put uh, in front of us, uh, this task, this this journey into our destiny that we never imagined it would be this. And you have come along with us and supported us through this. And so we love you and appreciate you so much for continuing to support this network, this ministry, and this very prophetic work in this crucial time in history. And you have been a part of that. And so I encourage you today to continue to support us at the House of Destiny Network. We need the support and so do you because we've come together in a most unique way. We're just a small remnant of people in comparison to the millions and millions of, 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 of people that are uh, watching different things out there. We, we're a little group, we're a remnant as my dad prophesied. But that's all God needs is a remnant. And it is from this place that so much truth has gone out and we have had to be bold in a difficult time we've been censored and it would have been easier just to avoid these things and try to play the game and we would have been okay. But instead, we knew that was the wrong thing to do. We knew that this is the time to stand up and you have been doing that with us. And so we, we truly thank you uh, for being obedient to God. And so today, as we come together in this way, I encourage you to give an offering and there's different ways that you can do it, however much you, you can, whatever God tells you to do. Uh, to support this work here because you're a part of something very important. And if you give a donation of any amount, you're going to get this beautiful uh, uh, devotion. And my dad wrote all of this. It's called The Daily Lights. And just make sure that you go to the website to give the donation if you want the book because you have to click the banner. But if you click the banner for a donation of any amount, we will send you this. And if you give $25 or more, you can get our new release. And this is an just an incredible uh, uh, collection of things my dad wrote. It's called Prophetic Revelations, a collection of letters from the pen of Kim Clement. And so much was so prophetic from his pen that he didn't ever say, that we didn't get video of. It's very important that you get this and have a look at it. If you've been following my dad especially and the things that he prophesied about. And also, most importantly, understanding the prophetic today because it is a gift of the Spirit that we all receive to a measure. And so this is a time to become or to be the warriors of the new millennium. And those warriors, this army of people that you are a part of, are a prophetic people. And in a time of such deception, it's so important that we can see clearly. And only through that gift of the Spirit, of prophecy through us, can we have that. And so. I think uh, I'm beginning to understand why God did what He did with the House of Destiny Network and with us in this time and with all of you as well. And so thank you so much for your support and for everything and for continuing to watch us and share, share, share so that people hear about what in particular God has put on my mother's heart because really God did this. And uh, it's important that we spread that around and be a part of something much bigger and greater than ourselves. And so thank you so much for joining us today for Current Events, and we will see you next week. If you can't say no in church, you're going to the wrong church. I mean, it's just true. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no 
if you read the New Testament, there is accountability in the fivefold ministry. Yeah. With the prophets, they're supposed to judge each other. I don't know yeah. if all this is going on all the time. Yeah. But there is accountability. I know that you're serving a lot, but serving doesn't equal salvation. Yeah. You also have to get in the Word, and you also have to be prayerful, and you have to have that, because it's not, you can get to heaven and say, I mean, I know you did a bunch of stuff, but I don't know who you are. Yeah. Church is not God. It's God's house. But when you say no to an activity that is too much for you in church, what's taught is that God is disappointed. And then you end up all these people who have these major guilt complexes who don't want to be anywhere near church as soon as they step away from it. And I think what we probably need is balance. Seeking knocking and asking. He wants us to connect with the true character of Christ. You see, religion in this country for so many, many, many years have truly, truly misrepresented Christ and who he really is. God, and God said this to me, everyone. He said that if we connect and we read the Gospels, meditate on and in the Gospels, okay? In our daily reading and devotional times, this will bring us closer to Christ or it will connect us to the true nature and character of Christ so that we can step into it and be exactly who we are in Christ. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to bh-pm.com, right there on the homepage, you'll see a form that you could fill out. And that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number. There's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement and then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom. Usually within about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call, and then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable. When I started my pillow, it was just a problem solution, one product company. Well, since then, with the help of my dedicated employees, we now have hundreds of products, some you might not even know about. To get the word out, we're having a $25 extravaganza. Two pack multi use my pillows, $25. My pillow sandals, $25. And for the first time ever, our six pack towel sets. You guessed it, just $25. Our brand new four pack dish towels, $25. And I've never done this before. Premium my pillows with all new Giza fabric, any size, any loft level, even king size for only $25. And there's so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code for our $25 extravaganza. Order $75 and over, your entire order ships absolutely free.